We all have a basic understanding of what makes up a Bond film, and we get pretty steamed when we feel it isn't done right. After all, making a Bond film can't be that hard. You just need a suave British guy, who's also handsome, but also has physicality, and is intelligent. But not too intelligent. He can identify various accents, but gets tricked by women again and again, and tends to take the least diplomatic route in many situations. Huh. So maybe writing Bond is a bit complicated. Don't forget my pathetic love of country. <laughs> now, while the movies of Daniel Craig have undoubtedly created a different kind of 007, I don't consider it sacrilege because, one, Bond is many things, and two, what makes Bond great is how the films can adapt to our times while still retaining the tropes we all love. Which brings me to Casino Royale and Skyfall, both of which are heralded as some of the best Bond movies ever made, and the two best outings by Craig. I'd like to discuss which kept the Bond elements most intact, and which was a better film overall. And I suppose that's completely inconspicuous. Get in. Casino has Bond partake in an easily avoidable and overdramatic poker game with a known terrorist. In Skyfall, Bond has to find a list that is threatening the lives of MI6 operatives and defeat a former agent hell-bent on revenge. And he ends up doing one of those things. As for Casino, well, this bit was a little odd. Take like the next one. There isn't enough room for me and your ego. 50 seconds. Is there room for these tubes for two? There's barely enough for you and your ego, Major. Hey. The plots could be forgiven if it weren't for two major missteps in the stories that cannot be ignored. See, I was fine with the defend the castle third act of Skyfall. The big groan moment came with that gravestone. You know, that gravestone? I had always assumed that Bond was a code name for whoever took the 007 title and showing that gravestone eliminated any secrecy the Bond character had. I also have to rake Casino over the coals for what they did in their third act. Once the main villain dies in the most anticlimactic way imaginable, the film turns into an extended honeymoon and flops its way into the finale. You can't have a film that is this focused for 75% of its runtime and then go off the rails in some of the most trite scenes in the Bond franchise. I have no honor left. You stripped it from me. <sighs> for less problems, Skyfall gets the movie point. But for a story involving poker and poison cocktails, the bomb point goes to the casino. This moment marked a huge change in the Bond image. This was a more brawny Bond, but even more importantly, it made him the girl in a lot of ways. Vesper has full control of this train car conversation, and there is more than one allusion to him being a piece of meat. Even accountants have imagination. How was your lamb? Skewered. When he's seducing the other woman for information, it's really she who is doing the seducing. And did you notice how in many of these encounters, the girl winds up on top? He is also a much more naive Bond in here. His attraction to Vesper is so obvious it comes off like a middle school crush. And it makes perfect sense, because this is a Bond fresh at bat, making mistakes and then learning from them. You don't trust anyone, do you, James? No. Then you've learnt your lesson. In Skyfall, we witness Bond being his usual capable self, then watch his descent into alcoholism and depression, to the point where he has to take a shot with a freaking scorpion to get a buzz. Like, really bro, you never heard of tequila? Once MI6 is in trouble, he returns, a bit worse for wear, but ready to reclaim his former self. The movie point goes to Casino for having a radical and complete character arc. In Skyfall, the characterization is a tad sloppy. but it's full of iconic Bond moments. Speaking of sloppy, given the strength of a standard martini, as well as how often Bond drinks them, shouldn't a scene like this look a lot more like this?
Casino has the more traditional approach to the Bond girl. Sexy girl number one gets introduced and then swiftly killed to make way for sexy girl number two, who's more intelligent and makes a bigger impression on Bond. I'm the money. Every penny of it. Skyfall also had two girls, but the second one is the one who dies quickly, and the first becomes a secretary? Truth be told, they're all great. One of my favorite scenes in Skyfall is the conversation between Severine and Bond. In one short scene, she conveys seduction, fear, anger, and even the way she exhales smoke is keeping in line with the dragon theme of the casino. However, Casino is going to get both the movie and the Bond point for how great the rapport was between Eva Green and Daniel Craig. Their lines have that unique charm from the Connery days, and both actors totally sell it, with the absolute zenith of their chemistry being the train car exchange. The bad guys here act as the perfect bookends for movie supervillains in general. At one end, you have the quietly menacing type. That's Le Chief, possibly the least twitchy Bond villain since Dr. No. At the other end is the over-the-top psychopath with more ham than a spit roast, aka Raul Silva. Both actors give excellent performances, but Skyfall gets the movie point for being able to really use the character to their best advantage while Le Chief is a bit underutilized, yet a more espionage-style adversary. I'm all in. Classic Bond fisticuffs were intentionally sloppy. Slow punches, lots of falling down, and oftentimes using the environment. I mean, Christ, sometimes it looked like they're fighting underwater. It was the style back then, and even in the 80s and 90s, this type of combat was fairly consistent. The combat in Casino Royale is Jason Bourne. Fast, brutal, and effectively tense. Skyfall is more in line with the Connery combat, especially the sequence on the train that uses everything from the old days I just described. As artsy as that movie is, it still retains the bones of classic Bond action. With its lavish locations and crisp lighting, Casino Royale is pure, high-class Bond. Everything is done competently, with no real complaints on my part, but nothing really stands out. You gamble? Skyfall is the most beautiful looking Bond film ever produced. The cinematography is jaw dropping at points, and it's great to see a mainstream movie use both obstruction of shots as well as clarity to create a dynamic visual balance. The score features a wide range of instruments that really give the scenes the right tone. And of course, you got director Sam Mendes bringing it all together into a film whose quality is simply, plainly, good. Both these movies put great effort to fire on both cylinders, as Bond films and as works of art. But the main distinction is that each succeeded in one category more than the other. So while Skyfall is my personal favorite of the two, and it is absolutely a better assembled film, Casino Royale is the most Bond. The name's Bond. James Bond. After all that's been said and speculated, what is Bond? Really? The thought had occurred to me. Good. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Oh. Okay. Secret Agent Man Secret agent man, they've given you a number and taken away your name. Beware of pretty faces that you find. A pretty face can hide.